a woman recently faced an outrageous legal situation. So get this, 2016, she was the victim of a violent domestic assault by her husband who attempted to kill her. Left her with two black eyes, a split lip, and multiple marks around her neck. Fast forward, he was sentenced to 10 years in prison and she filed for divorce, only to learn she was required to pay for his lawyer. So yes, an obscure Kentucky law required her to pay for his lawyer because as an inmate, he had no means to hire an attorney himself. You try to kill someone, and then they have to pay for your lawyer? Well, no, what lawyers is... have to get paid. Well, okay, this... but Ariva, isn't there a way to have a public <laughs> defender? Why does this woman have to pay? This well, is the best you can... case for why the Me Too movement mm. is so important. <laughs> because when you get a group of men in a room together running out, Everything you get laws like this. This is why we need more women in state office and federal office in every office. But, so what is the law exactly? So the law is the person filing for divorce has to pay the fees and costs for the person they're divorcing. And it doesn't matter if they are the victim of domestic violence, like in this case. Wow. And we know domestic violence often involves women as the victim, more so than men. So in this case, while this woman is in the emergency room, having her injuries that were, you know, perpetrated on her by the ex-husband cared for, he's at the bank cleaning out her bank account. He then gets arrested. He's in jail. She tries to get away from him, which is what we tell domestic violence victims to do, which is separate from the abuser. And then she gets hit with the cost associated with the divorce. So this, this, almost, this, this obscure law then essentially almost forces someone to stay in to an abusive yes. relationship or marriage. Yes. Right. Because if you file for divorce, you're stuck paying for the lawyer's yes. bills of your of the spouse it who's abusing you. discourages separation, which right. is what Judy, as a psychologist, we you know we encourage domestic violence victims to get away from their abusers. Come forward, take care of business, and they're disincentivizing people yes. from taking care of business because she's getting cleaned out just to try to create a safe space for herself. This and is we, what happens. Yeah, and we know that, you know, it, in terms of how many women actually become a victim of some type of physical assault by a partner, it's 25%, according yeah. to a study done by National Institute of Justice. So this is not a small number, it's one out of four they're gonna have to be ready to deal with it. Well, this is another form of abuse for a domestic violence victim because you go to the courts seeking help, seeking assistance, and you don't expect to be met with additional barriers, with additional mm -hmm. op uh, obstacles. And in this case, the husband is kind of using the system in a way to further victimize her. And as you said, Travis, this is going to be a, a disincentive for women to file for divorce and may drive some women back into those abusive relationships. Well, l luckily, mm -hmm. Kentucky lawmakers did recently file a bill which would require state, the state to pay the legal costs of an abuser in a divorce case similar to this. Yes. So, which, which is good, but in her case, it's too late. It, it's a little bit too late. I know that the Kentucky Equal Justice Center did help her finalize her divorce, but these obscure laws, until a case like this highlights how crazy they are, they sometimes don't get the media attention they deserve. And we have to give a lot of credit to this woman because she was willing to make herself the voice and the face of this movement to tell her personal story and to expose her very personal situation with domestic violence, which is, you know, dehumanizing in and of itself. So yeah. kudos to the woman who had the courage to come forward and now have a law change that's going to help thousands of women in Kentucky. Just one quick, in general, whoever starts divorce proceedings is, is liable for the attorneys? It really depends on the state, and this was an obscure law in the state of Kentucky, but I did find another case where a woman had to pay alimony to her abusive husband who was also incarcerated. So we don't want to yeah. beat up on Kentucky because there are a lot of other states that have these kinds of laws that make it very difficult for right. women who are the victims of domestic violence to separate from their husbands. So hopefully yeah. Kentucky will lead the way. They'll change their law, and other states that have these arcane laws will do the same.